good to great, as Jim Collins says, get the right people on the bus. You guys have heard that before. Um, and there's a lot of really good companies, but very few great ones. And all of the great companies have a clear vision of where they're going. So I wrote down um, some of the benefits of a, of a clear vision, and you guys might wanna write these down too. You get everyone on the team rowing in the same direction. For you team owners who have more than one admin, I'm sure you can relate to this. You got four or five agents or maybe two agents on your team. Everybody's running around, nobody's on the same page. Has anybody experienced that? Probably just me, right? I'm the only one that, that has had that happen. Andrew's smiling over there. So it gives everybody like, here's our vision, here's where we're going, everybody knows where we're going. And then it also gives you guys a sense of unity as a team. Unity means you're all kind of, you know where you're going, you're together on the vision of the leader or leadership, um, and you hit, you're unified in that. And this is maybe kind of airy-fairy, but a lot of this stuff is something bigger than you to work towards, right? So I believe that anything that's noble is bigger than us. It's not just us, it's not me, it's not Mike Rapaski or Andrew, it's, it's, it's a higher, higher good. Um, and then when you get really clear about your vision, one of the benefits of that is you can attract team members and or clients um, based on this unified vision. So what, what is a vision comprised of? We're gonna talk about some different things today and you've heard all these different terms, MVVVP. So your core values and your beliefs are very important to your vision. Core values meaning what's super important to me, what is my value system? We're gonna get into that a little bit later. And then we talk about purpose. So it's core values and then it's purpose and then it's, it's mission. And think about mission as why or big why. You guys have heard of the big why in Keller Williams. Has anybody not heard of the big why? Scott's smiling over there. And maybe you haven't. And we're gonna, we're gonna show a video a little bit later on Simon Sinek. And he talks about you know the big why and the golden circle. And why are we doing what we're doing? Are we just selling houses? Are we just making widgets? Are we just dealing with um, buyers and sellers who hate each other, Andrew Ginter? He, that was Andrew's call last week. You're just gonna tell me the seller hates the buyer and the buyer hates the seller, right? I go, pretty much. <laughs> thought I'd inject that a little humor there. I thought that was funny. And, and by the way, Scott, really good choice to have Andrew as our broker. He, he not only has the business knowledge, but he has the temperament to deal with um, all of the challenges that come up as the broker. So thank you, Andrew, for that service. Um, so the questions for you guys are, what is your vision for your individual business and organization? I know as a company, Keller Williams International has a big vision, but what about your team? Have you thought about it? Where do I wanna go in the next year? Where do I wanna go in the next three years? Where do I wanna be in five years? And beyond, those are things to really you know, start to think about. We're gonna talk a lot today about some things that you're like, wow, that's pretty deep. And the truth of the matter is it should be. And this is gonna take some time. And again, my hope is that you'll have a basic understanding of mission, vision, and values. And then you'll be able to start to enunciate that and put it on paper and go back and forth with your team and, and kind of flesh that out. Uh, before I move on, does anybody have a clearly defined uh, vision core values and mission statement for their team? Anybody on the call? Bueller? Anyone? And it's okay if you don't, because most people don't. Um, it looked like again, Shoshana and Lisa Cisco might have been raising their hands there. Colleen okay. Nicholas does. Colleen. Okay. Yeah. And I can't, I, can't, I can't see everybody for whatever reason. Pete, if you click the uh, the gallery view in the uh, uh, upper right-hand corner, it should give you a uh, there we go. I'm a I smile at you, Pete. Oh my God, there's Lisa Cisco on the call and Jeff McManaman and even Nancy Emmerman, the number one profit share earner in the company. Hi, Nancy. Anyways, I digress. So the truth is that most people don't. Um, I know Lisa does and Colleen, that's great that you do. 
but some of the things to think about, questions for you guys, what are your goals? Think into the future, what do you see for you and your organization? Like five years down the road, Jeff McManaman, where do you want things to be? Do you wanna still be running around like crazy? And I don't know where you're at, but where do you wanna, where do you wanna see this, this bus kind of going in five years? Who are, or what do you want your team to become? Like who are the people that we are becoming as a group? What do we hope to accomplish? What kind of services do you intend to add to your organization over the next five years? Because as real estate agents, we can do a lot of things, right? You know, we have affiliations and stuff like that. So there's some natural services. Maybe you're doing some real estate investing. Um, maybe you're flipping homes. Um, I don't know that we're wholesaling homes, Scott, are we? But I'm just kidding. There's certain things that we're doing that go hand in hand with what we're already offering. And what are those services you intend to add over the next five years for your group? I think one of the biggest things about vision is you need to fuel it with purpose. I know that's another generic word. Um, you've heard, you know, are you being busy or are you being purposeful? Meaning, are we just doing the things that are gonna move us forward, right? There's five money-making activi activities that the real estate agents do that cause us to make money. What are the things that your organization needs to do that are on purpose? You know, you know, Mike, I know that as a team leader, you probably have to, is it still 210, 40? Do you have to book 10 a week, 40 a month? I remember that, I was there to, to kind of move the recruiting forward and then there's profitability and retention and, and all those sort of things. What is it for you as a, as a smaller team or group? Um, do you want to expand? So associating that vision with a um, larger and bigger purpose I found makes it helpful to kind of bring it all together. Other questions to, for, for your vision. How will our vision benefit the growth of the individuals who make up our team? Because I know, we, so we probably backwards engineered this. We all have groups and some of us have a mission, vision and values, but for those of you who don't, think about the people who are on your team. How does this vision benefit them? How will your vision benefit others? Are there things in the community that you wanna achieve? Or are we just here selling real estate? What greatness can we strive for? I know I'm asking a ton of questions and you're probably like, Man, is he just going to ask us questions the whole time? Pete, could you could you share a little bit about what like the kind of the earth shattering questions that you came to that helped you really get clear on what you thought was the the uh, like the core of your vision when you were making it years ago? That's a great question, and and I would say that you know things change, right? So five years ago, and Scott can probably attest to this or seven years ago when he called me, he said, hey, I got this thing going in Rocky River. I was a team leader who just uh, got dehired from a market center. I was like, do I even really wanna do this? And then when I woke up in 2015 and I'm like, yeah, I really wanna build this team, you know, and I can do this. I was sitting in a bold class and the instructor was like, you're 100% responsible for your success. And I thought about that and I'm like, you know what, if it's to be, it's up to me. And I had an agent on the left and an agent on the right. And I'm like, you need to take bold. And uh, the funny thing was I needed to take bold and I needed to take it four times that year, four times the next year and 13 times overall. But the questions for me were, you know, what's really important to me down to the core? Who am I? What do I want to do with my life? Um, who do I want to impact? You know, what kind of change do I want to make? Because real estate, as you know, Andrew, is the biggest financial um, obligation that people typically have. And, and when you interact with people on a personal level, um, are you doing it with excellence? You know? So I really think the most important thing to establish, Andrew, to help you establish your vision is your core values. And we went really, really deep on that when I first started, Elizabeth and I. What are the most important things to me? What are the non-negotiables, right? What are things you absolutely just like draw the line in the sand for, if that makes sense? 
So there's a lot of um, area in real estate to kind of operate in the gray, not at Keller Williams Greater Metropolitan, by the way, but maybe other brokerages. And so, so what are you willing to stand for or not stand for in your life? And it could be personal or professional, right? And, and I think that our professional lives tie into our personal lives. So as you look, Andrew, as you look at, you know, what you're doing as a, a leader um, in an organization, what are those things that I want to accomplish that line up with my values? And it's going to be different for everybody. So I had a couple other ones. Uh, what, what do you stand for? How can I make a difference? Um, and after you take a look at all these, so what's, you know, we've talked about vision a little bit. And then we've talked about purpose. How do I tie those in together to make one statement? That's a really good question. I actually have a, a resource for that, guys. Has anybody seen this book, Beyond Entrepreneurship? It's by Jim Collins. Danielle, you look really excited about that, by the way. It's a really good book. The first 94 pages of this, for you guys, it's a little bit of a dry read, but took me three times to read it and then I spent the whole weekend going you know what the heck is this mission vision and values thing about you know is it really important and they talked about some of the great companies out there that have been able to just really take off because they were really clear about some of these things and and that may not be important to you but I would challenge you today at least on your core values to establish those um, because it's something that you can recruit to. So this is a question. Who knows what Keller Williams um, vision statement is? Don't look. Anybody? Scott, do you uh, know what Scott, it is? Turn off your camera. <laughs> God, man, family, then business. Those are the, that's the core values. Is this the uh, lives worth having, businesses worth owning, legacies worth leaving? <laughs> That's no. actually that's actually the mission statement. Oh, there you go. Oh, wait, <laughs> is it to be the real estate company of choice? <laughs> hey, Scott, thank you, sir. <laughs> be the real estate company of choice for agents and their customers. So, um, and that's a pretty big statement, isn't it? So that's the, uh, that's the KW International uh, vision statement. So I know that was a quick overview on uh, vision. Does anybody have any comments or questions on vision or does anybody have something they wanna share on their own particular vision for their organization? Okay. I, I, yeah, Pete, I'll, I'll just say one comment, which is that I think it's hard when you come with a company that has such an amazing and compelling mission and vision. Almost anything I wrote for hours, I just felt sounded hackneyed or like, you know, be, like, why would I need to repeat it? That was already good. So yeah. I found yeah. that challenging. Uh, and I, I appreciate that feedback, so Sean. And I think, you know, as I prepared for this, this is probably one of the toughest things to you know, if you guys have sat down and thought about your big why, for instance, and then you start thinking about, well, what is my vision for the future? But I think the big thing, Soshana, and I know you're a forward thinker, is like looking out, you know, your, your son's a few years younger than you, right? So, so what is your, what does it look like in five years, 10 years, 15 years? And, and what do I see for me and my group individually? Um, and what's cool about Keller Williams is, Hey, if, if you really think that their mission, vision, and values lines up with yours, which mine certainly does as well, and you don't need one, that's okay. What I found though, especially with the core values, is when you get clear about your own core values and you start to recruit to those core values. So you have a candidate in front of you, Jeff McManaman, and you're hiring an admin. And you're like, man, I really like this candidate. They're awesome. You know, she's a high S, high C, and, and they're going to knock it out of the park. But then you start to really think about, hey, they're not, like, she was, like, dropping F-bombs in the interview. And I'm just being funny, right? But looking at, like, hey, these are the five to seven things that comprise me and my group, and these are what are important to me. Um, 
you know, humble, hungry, accountable, teachable, service, stuff like that. And if that person doesn't have those to start, you probably can't teach uh, those core values, especially hungry. Has anybody hired somebody who was unmotivated? Just a couple of times. Yeah. Did they become any more motivated after you gave them the speech? Couldn't, couldn't really create motivation for them, to be quite honest. And you know what, Scott? You're, you're a pretty motivational guy. You know, I mean, I would jump over the fence for you yet. <laughs> if you're not hungry in here, so the core values come from here. Like, what's inside of you? Um, so I think somebody said KW's core values. What are they? Does anybody remember? God, family, then business. Yeah. Lisa Cisco, God, family, and then business. So the other things too, which I would tie into as we're transitioning on to core values now, is the, the beliefs of KW, the WI4C2TS, which is the win, win, or no deal, integrity, customers, commitment, communication, creativity, teamwork, trust, and success. Those are beliefs, um, but they're also, values and i would encourage you guys to to keep it short five to seven things that are really important to you and i know scott or uh, mike sent you guys a document and i don't know if you guys printed it out or or have it on your your screen but the document says possible core values it looks like this by the way and this is a really good thing to do maybe just with your leaders or your whole team and we've done this as a group before where you sit everybody down and you just say, hey, here's, here's a page or two of values. What's important to you? If anybody's taken bold, they have the core values just on the cards. Does anybody remember that exercise? No? Okay. Yeah, Andrew's got them. I was the only one paying attention in bold. Anyways, um, you know, they're just one word statements. You know, accountability, accuracy, integrity, faith, optimism, grace, hard work, stuff like that. And taking your whole group, and Mike was in a class with me. I don't know if you remember that, Mike. We sat in together and one of my coaches did this exercise. And what we found was like, it, it created a buzz. Like everybody was talking. And so what we did was, hey, how many people said accountable? And then they'd raise their hand. How many people said teamwork, trust, um, excellence, whatever, you're, whatever is really important to you. And what this little memory jogger or brain exercise will do for you, it'll cause you to think. So, which is really important. How many of you guys have thinking time in your schedule? Anybody? I do, I don't always follow it, but I do. <laughs> well, and I, I know, listen guys, nobody's perfect and for me, the first 45 minutes of my day, I get a cup of coffee, I go out for a walk, and I think about my business, and I spend some time in prayer, but it's also thinking like, all right, where do we need to go to move forward? You know, who are we? And are, do our current values reflect who we are? And what do we wanna accomplish? Do we just wanna sell, you know, 500 homes, 200 homes, 1,000 homes, or do we wanna make a difference? in people's lives. So and I think the values of who you are in this exercise, um, it says here, a deeply internalized philosophical guide that profoundly influences goal setting, decision-making, conflict resolution, and more generally how we operate our business. That, so that conflict resolution, has anybody ever had a deal that blew up? Just me, Andrew, you just get the calls for the deals that blow up. So have you ever had a deal that blew up that you thought, well, we could probably do it this way and, you know, get it done and, and you know, the broker should close his ears on this one. But there's always kind of ways to do things, um, maybe not 100% ethically, if that makes sense in our business. Um, Colleen, you're smiling over there. Um, well, we know there's agents in the business that'll say, oh, just do it this way. You know, you don't have to have it on the ROC or we can do this off the contract and, you know, let's just get it done. And, you know, no, that's not the right way to do things. So as I, and I have mine on the wall, I'm having these conversations. I just turn around 
and I see integrity, is your integrity for sale? Is integrity important to you? And I'm, I'm speaking for me, mm -hmm. um, Debbie, you're not in your head, but this is where the rubber meets the road. Hey, Kim Kapustik, I see you're on the call. Good to see your face. Um, who, what are we about? And as we do business daily, we have a lot of decisions to make, right? When we hire people, when we're doing deals, um, when we go on our appointments, you know, how do we conduct ourselves? Our values are, are how we live, you know, all that out. So. Yeah, Pete, I thought, uh, I thought just to that comment, I thought it was a really uh, great example of leadership to involve all of, you know, your employees and the conversation around uh, the mission, vision, and values of the company. I think it does two things. One, you know, everybody was very bought in by the end of that session as to what, you know, what you all had landed on, but it also doesn't put you in a position where you necessarily have to have all the answers, right? You don't have to go to the mountaintop and come back down with the solution. Like you can involve them in, in building it. So for anyone, I guess that has already has a team and you're like, well, am I already out over my skis if I don't have a vision? No, uh, your team has probably come together for some reason that just hasn't been well-defined. Yeah, and the other thing, thanks Mike, I would add, any of you guys wanna do this as a group, I will lead the exercise with your group. I'm willing to, to share this with your team because I believe it's so important that you get this clear. We're all in business together, right? We profit share a little bit, right, Scott Phillips? Number three in the company? Something like that. That's a yeah. Yeah. good job, Tyler Williams, Greater Metropolitan. Um, yeah, so I can help you with this. So as you share this with your team, I would say, if you have a large team, some of you guys have some bigger teams, maybe you have 10 people. Maybe you don't have all 10 people in the room, but I know you have at least three to five that are your core leaders and you really value their input. I would say for the values though, I would include everybody, but for the, the vision, the vision has to come from you. You're the leader of your organization. So, but I would put it in front of them. You know, what we did was we, we started drawing it out and we said, hey, what do you think? And how does that sound? And how do you feel about that? And what you learn is, you know, your vision isn't necessarily the vision that everybody else has, if that makes sense. We're not all um, to the core of the same people. So I'm obviously probably a little different than Jeff or Mike or Scott or Andrew. And, and our teams are gonna be different individually. So I actually said to my teammates who I'm encouraging to build their own team inside of my team. So the circle and then the circle, we've all seen that one before. That's Keller Williams, right? So as an individual agent building your business inside of a team, what, what's important to you? And we talked about that as well. So this can go pretty deep. I would say though, getting the input on the vision and the mission statement from your, your key leaders is really important because you get buy-in and then, then their input is valuable because does anybody have somebody on their team that's smarter than, than them? I know Scott, you do, you have like four people. <laughs> Nancy's going, yes. So do any of you guys know Maya Elizabeth? Does everybody know Elizabeth Kosminski? Pretty smart cookie, right? I mean, she's creating spreadsheets that like, like, what does that do? You know, it takes her 20 minutes to explain it to me. And, and she, she sees some things that I don't. Um, and Scott, as you know, your leaders see some things that you don't. And you really wanna make sure that you're not missing something. Can I, can I ask you a question quick, Pete? Sure. Um, like, is there a specific order or way to build this out that makes more sense? Like, do you start off with like one word values and then move to like value statements or move directly to vision and then does the mission get built on top of the vision or how, like what's the best way to because it, it, this does always seem to me like a thing that just kind of like runs in a thousand directions i know and then by yeah. the time i think i've finished it's just like a bunch of stuff that doesn't really make any sense or tie together because it all runs kind of independent yeah. of everything else yeah and i would say this is probably one of the toughest business topics i've ever dealt with um, and I think if you ask me in my personal opinion, when you sit down and you think about like, what's important to me, what are my values? Um, 
you know, some of ours are, I'll just give you one word, excellence, excellence in everything, service, integrity, investment, development. Um, you're going to have five to seven things as you look at this big picture, like in my business, like what are the things that are like non-negotiable for me? Maybe it's accountability. 